Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to be going over the intro to War All the Time by Charles Bukowski, poems from 81 to 80. Bow. Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, I'm even up walking around trying to get the blood pumping, doing all the shit, right? Okay, right off the bat, there's a couple things that I want to hit. And the first one is this. To Daryl Vienna. Okay. Now, um, I did some research, guys, because that's what I fucking do. Okay. So, Daryl Vienna, I was not aware of who this was. And so I had to do some looking and stuff. And what I found out was that... There are two people it could be, or these two different people are exactly the same person, okay? So, one of these people, and more likely who this is, especially since horse meat is in this, um, Daryl Vienna is a um, horse owner who has a bunch of horses at Santa Anita. And, in fact, right now... Daryl Vienna has a horse named Bukowski and apparently they were pretty close um, and like Bukowski was going to Santa Anita every time they ran and they ended up meeting each other hanging out and talking the whole thing so that is one person it is but there is also and I think it was 84 or 86 I can't remember somewhere in there there is also a Daryl Vienna who was the editor of a little magazine, or at least one copy of some sort of lit mag, okay? And I will put that up here too, okay? So that is probably who Daryl Vienna is. I'm, I'm leaning more towards the horse, but the horse guy could also be an editor. You never fucking know, okay? So either way. So there is that. Another thing about this book is that um, under the acknowledgments, we're going to notice, because if you remember, when we started this whole journey, the acknowledgments was like a giant chunk, okay? And as we get farther and farther in, these acknowledgments are going to get smaller and smaller, okay? Because he, even though he was still sending a bunch of stuff out to these magazines he didn't have to so he didn't put out nearly as much shit like that as he did in the early days so this says um some of these poems have appeared in the following magazines blow electrum long shot poetry la poetry now random weirdness sepia and wormwood review and that's it that's fucking crazy. This is like three years, four years worth of poems. And those are the only places that had his stuff. So by this point, he is just doing so well with doing this stuff that he doesn't fucking need to do any of that other shit. Okay. So let's um, go into the Bukowski.net timeline and see what has been happening. All right, so here we go. 1982, that's where we're gonna start this because Dangling in the um, Turn Forsha came out in 81 and we went through all of 81. So in 82, earnings from foreign royalty payments um, does not include Black Sparrow or City Lights were 89 thousand three hundred and eighty nine dollars eighty nine thousand okay so let's adjust this shit um oh my fucking god so adjusting for inflation that was nearly three hundred thousand dollars okay for his foreign rights for foreign royalty payments. That's not even rights. That's royalty payments. Oh, okay. 
Um, during this time, he also starts a novel called Streetwalker, which I think we should probably do a whole other video on um, because it was an unfinished novel. Um, it had a couple different names and um, a lot of the stuff that was in that book ended up going into other stuff. And so we should probably just hit all of that in just a separate video. So remind me if I don't do this in the next six months, go, hey, remember you said you were going to do? OK, and we'll do that. Um, so now um, L.A. Weekly asks him to write a weekly column he submits the first installment, but the weekly column never happens. So this is after Open City. Like, this is like 10 years after Open City, more than that. Um, probably close to 10 or 8 or 10 years after the LA Free Press. And now the LA Weekly, which is still going on out here, asks him to kind of reignite that spark. He turned something in and they probably said, dear God, what the fuck were we thinking? This was a horrible fucking idea. <laughs> so um, there's that. Um, okay, so we have uh, The Last Generation, which was, again, the Black Sparrow New Year's greeting. I really like the simple, minimalistic cover work that um, John Martin's wife did on all these books. Well, probably his most respected novel, Ham on Rye, comes out on July 28th here in 1982. And then on December 27th, we have horse meat because the horse meat stuff is going to be in the first section of War All the Time that we go over. Him and Linda actually split up in between September and December of this year. So I'm wondering if we're going to be getting any kind of pissed off love poems in here. Oh, and then um, this was a big deal. At least I remember this as a very small tyke. The Raiders moved from Oakland to L.A. So LA Raiders, woo, we had a thing for a hot minute. Then in 1983, Bukowski stops working on the novel Streetwalker and reuses some of the material in a new novel called The Fool, which again was unpublished. He had a bunch of things come out in 83. We have Sparks, which was the Black Sparrow New Year's greeting. We have um, Bring Me Your Love, actually, have a copy of that right here. I'll just show it to you. I don't need to download a picture. Bring Me Your Love with um, artwork from Robert Crumb, which is awesome. This is a great, super awesome book. I just absolutely love it. I love all of these weird little books that R. Crumb illustrated for Bukowski. It's getting dark in here, so showing you pictures of some of this stuff is gonna be kind of tricky. Yeah, but anyway, so that's a good one. I like that a lot. Hot Water Music comes out in September. Bukowski Purdy Letters, which I haven't read, so maybe I should look for that, comes out in November. And then both The Most Beautiful Woman in Town and Tales of Ordinary Madness come out in December. Now, these books also... Okay, so that was 83. So when did... The other one come out. That had to have been in the early 70s, right? Yeah, so in 72, Erections, Ejaculations, Exhibitions, and General Tales of Ordinary Madness came out. And now City Lights in 83 has broken that book up into two smaller paperbacks and put those out. Pretty smart. Okay, also in 83, the Olympia typewriter breaks down and he writes letters by hand starting on July 16th. Oh my gosh. He split up with Linda again in August. And then here he goes, here he goes. He replaces his broken Olympia manual typewriter with an IBM Selectric 2. He had finally gone electric, but he still, as always, bought the typewriter used and the Selectric 2 model had been made obsolete by the Selectric 3 a few years earlier. So even though he has come into the modern age, he's still using like a 1970s electric typewriter. Okay. Um, 
the LA Museum of Contemporary Art opens on November 20th, and the D.A.R.E. program starts in 1983, which basically just put a bunch of kids on drugs instead of getting them off of drugs. Shocking. One for the old boy in 1984 was the Black Sparrow greeting. And these greetings are usually like little tiny hardcover books. It's just like a little nice thing to give to your patrons. Um, there's no business. That's another R. Crumb Bukowski joint. This guy right here. Let me make sure you can see it. This comes out this month. It is. That's a little bit better. So there's some great pictures in here too. But here's just a good picture of um, the main character about to get beat up while the showgirls are dancing. Anyway, so that's a fun one. I like the other one better, but that's okay. Horses don't pet. Horses don't pet. Horses don't bet on people and neither do I. This was the Wormwood Review number 95. And it was an all Bukowski issue, which is pretty cool. Um, then War All the Time. Our book today comes out on October 16th. Barfly, the pageant press edition, comes out in... I do not have that one. And then Going Modern. I think this... I'd have to check. But I think this is Bukowski chapbook portfolio piece that actually never ended up coming out, if this is the one I'm thinking of. Either Bukowski didn't like the way it looked or something. There was something wrong with it, and so... They were all made, but they were never distributed, and some of them have leaked out. His phone number in 84 is 213-519-7279. Ooh, that rhymes, so that would be easy to remember. LA becomes the first city in America with two telephone area codes, as the San Fernando and San Gabriel Valleys are designated 818. I'm assuming the first one would be the 213 number, which is what Bukowski had and then you had the 818 and if you remember in Pulp Fiction they're like driving and he's like you know anyone in the valley and he's like I don't know anyone in the 818 you know I ain't got any friends in the 818 that's funny dude and then this year in 84 the Raiders defeat the Washington Redskins 38 to 9 and Super Bowl I think that's 24 or no 28 or wait, no, that says 18. Sorry, Roman numerals, glasses, you know how it goes. And LA becomes, because this was a huge thing. Like, seriously, this was like one of the biggest things in my childhood. Okay. LA becomes the only American city ever to host the Summer Olympic Games twice. And we had that little um, eagle mascot. It's probably Olympic Sam or something stupid like that. Anyway. That was what that was, okay? So now, back to war all the time. How we are going to do this book, okay? It got fucking dark in here, guys. I fucked up. Okay, I think what we're going to do, if you're going to read along with this, we're going to do the first hundred pages. Um, because horse meat is right in this chunk right here. And that is about 30 pages for the one thing. So we'll, we'll go from the first poem, which is some of my readers, and we will read through to Oh Yes. And that'll be the first week of War All the Time. So I hope you join us. I hope you dig it. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts about anything, please leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you join any tier of my membership so you could actually be a part of those videos um, when I do the Bukowski Book Club videos. Okay, so type hard, everybody, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.